Christianity is all about fellowship, disciple, discipleship, and stewardship. Say with me, fellowship, discipleship, stewardship. That's Christianity in a nutshell. He said, whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and come the cost. Whether he has enough to, enough to, we need to have enough faith to finish this race. Some of us, we have a lot of faith to start with, but we need faith to continue and we need faith to finish. It's important for us to count the cost. Is there a cost for being a Christian? Yes. Is there a cost for being a Christian? Yes. What is the cost? You can no longer be selfish. What is the cost? You can no longer be self-centered. What is the cost? You cannot just wallow in self-pity. What is the cost? The cost is the self has to be crucified. And if you don't do it well, things will come back to you so that you have to do it again. And it's good for you to pray. Whenever you fail, pray. Ask the Lord, bring it back to me once again and I will overcome this time. Amen. Christianity is not about me. Christianity is not about me. It's not about you. Christianity is about Jesus. Christianity is about Jesus. Christianity is about Jesus. It's not about what God has done for me, how he has blessed me, what I've learned. Christianity is about Jesus. It's about Jesus. And if I haven't learned well, let the people after me continue to learn better. That's why we have all the heroes of faith. Can we say amen? And if you continue to read, or oh, what king going to make war? Can we go to that? Against another king does not sit down first and consider whether he's able with how many? One more time, how many? To meet him who comes against him with? So who has more soldiers? Who has more soldiers? The enemy. So is this a tough battle? In this world, do we have more Christians or more non-Christians? Do we have more believers or more unbelievers? So is this a tough battle? You're kidding yourself if you think it's not. Faith must stand against all the challenges and all the difficulties, all the doubt and all the unbelief, the temptation to compromise, the temptation to let go and just operate like the rest of the world. So the key is living the life of Christ not my life. How? Through the Holy Spirit. Our fellowship must be in the Word of God. Our fellowship must be with the Spirit of truth, the Spirit of salvation. He's the Savior of my soul. So how's your soul doing? How's your soul doing? Your feelings your will, your thoughts, how are they doing? He saves you. And he will continue to save you. Can we say amen? So that we're going up and we're not going down. And when you find yourself in anger and hatred, don't blame somebody else. Work it with yourself. By the power of the Holy Ghost. How am I dealing with anger? How am I dealing with prejudice? How am I dealing with hatred? Holy Ghost, help me. Do not allow me to be corrupted and be consumed with the devil's emotions. 
Don't allow me to be consumed with the devil's thoughts. Lift up your hands and pray that. Lift up your hands and pray that. Don't allow me to be consumed with the devil's ugly emotions, ugly thoughts. Oh, Lord, preserve me. Guard me. Protect me. Can we say amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My stewardship as a parent, my stewardship as a as a husband or a wife, my stewardship as a businessman, my stewardship with my job. Amen. I want you to understand that everybody, every one of us, nobody wants to offend anybody. Do you have anybody here? Do we have anybody you make a job, a profession out of offending people? That's what you like to do? Do we have somebody here? No, but we do. Isn't that right? You look so holy. <laughs> we do, is that right? That's part of life. But should you magnify it? Should you make a, what do you call it? A hill out of a molehill. Every one of us, including myself, we love to give a good impression. Don't you? We all love to give a good impression. But I want to tell you that you can never impress God. God will never be pleased with an impression, but He will be pleased with our life. So don't focus on making good impressions. Focus on making your life good. And don't be so naive as to believe every person. Don't be so naive as to believe your Facebook. They do very well on Facebook, but then they ended up with domestic violence in the news. So don't focus on impressions. Focus on being a real person, a real friend, a real partner, a real Christian, a real believer, a real brother, a real sister, a real husband, a real life, a real wife, and a real parent. Amen. Sometimes you have to offend in order that you can stand strong in Christ. Don't be, a, don't be a coward when it comes to your Christianity. Because what you compromise to have, you will eventually lose. Do you get that? What you compromise to keep, you will eventually lose. Christians must have guts and courage to stand against compromise. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, if you were lukewarm, what will he do? Speak you out of his mouth. Let's be cause-minded, looking at our life, looking at our years, and look at the whole cause. So planning is very important. Planning with the Holy Spirit, praying to get his inspirations, his thoughts, his priorities, his perspectives. How many of you know that the Holy Spirit is the wonderful counselor, so we need his counsels? Can we say amen? Amen. Let's look at Acts chapter 20, verse 24. Acts 20, 24. Does God want us to have a sad life or does God want us to have a happy life? A joyful life. A joyful life. Amen? So this is the Apostle Paul speaking. He said, none of these things move me. He said, I'm so fixed with my faith. I'm so determined with my calling. I'm so determined with my vision, with my assignment from God, that none of these things move me, nor do I count my life dear to myself, so that I may finish. Say with me, finish. One more time. Finish. Finish my race with? With? So is it a good race? Is it a good race? Yes. Amen. It's a good one. Would you like to finish your race with health? Would you like to finish your race with wisdom? Yes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The word is good, eh? Amen. So what do we need to finish? 
What do we need? The grace. We must focus on the grace. The grace is what Jesus did and what the Holy Ghost does for you. The grace is what Jesus did and what the Holy Ghost does and what the Father wants for you. Amen. Lift up your hands and say grace for living. Grace for living. Amen. Be grace minded. Be grace minded. Be grace minded. You know, some of us, if you want to have a good life, you need to change the way you talk. You think you're joking? No, you're not joking. You need to change the way you talk. Because even before you leave your house, you're already defeated. You know, when you drive to the parking, oh, it's hard to get a car park now. It's difficult. So many cars here. What are you talking about? My God will provide all my needs according to my, his riches and glory. So if his rich, he's got a big car park. Amen. Your confession will become your profession. Your confession will become your profession. So start to talk success. Well, you say to me, Pastor Dora, are you in denial? No. Yes, I understand problem solving. We need to problem solve. When you go to the doctor, you're not just confessing how good you are. If you're healthy and strong, why are you looking at, you know, why are you going to the doctor? There are times for communication. When you communicate, you communicate, and then you problem solve, and then you plan. But I'm talking about your mindset. I'm talking about the way that you live. Are you always looking at problems? Are you always problem solving? Or are you looking at grace and you believe God for grace? It's your personality. It's your mindset. It's the way you are. I'm not talking about not communicating. I'm not talking about living in denial. No. Of course we have to plan. Of course we have to look at the, the negative, uh, what do you call that, um, to be preventive. That's the word, right? To be preventive, to be cautious, to communicate. All of that is good because the Holy Spirit will warn us of the things to come. But I'm talking about the heart that is set in the grace of God. Amen. The heart that says his grace is sufficient for me. His strength is made perfect in my weakness. It's beyond the natural realm. It's beyond the human realm. Let's look at Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 in the Amplified Bible. This is very important. Now I will always bring you back Two, it's not what you do, it's what Jesus has done. It's not what you do, but it's what the Holy Spirit is doing. That's Christianity. Okay? Because if you're trying to live it by yourself, your life will be very hard. There's no way that you can do a Christian life without the Holy Ghost. Always the Holy Spirit. So the key is to have more of Him. Holy Spirit, more of you. Holy Spirit, your thoughts, your thoughts. Please fill my mind with your thoughts. Holy Ghost, fill my mind with your thoughts. Amen. Holy Ghost, your inspirations, your thoughts. Holy Spirit, your reasoning. Holy Spirit, your spiritual intelligence. Can we say amen? Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. And I am convinced and sure of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will continue until the day of Jesus Christ, right up to the time of his return, developing that good work and perfecting and bringing it to full completion. Won't you say that is a good life? Won't you say that is a good life? So Jesus is saying, I started you as a baby. And I'm living all the way with you. I'm going all the way with you until you've become a full-grown, mature, Christian, adult, ready for heaven. Can we say amen? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. The key is that if we allow the Holy Spirit to work on us on the inside then our outside will be good. What works on the inside is what will work on the outside. So don't focus on working on the outside and then neglect the work on the inside. 
Work on the inside and your outside will have a good spiritual environment. And you have angelic ministry. And you have a Christian temperament. And you have a Christian attitude. And you have a positive, prosperous Christian atmosphere. Can we say amen? Remember the Bible says, by their fruit you will know them. It's not by their works. It's not by their achievements. It's not by their degree, not by their titles. By their fruit, you will know them. Can you tell me what are the fruits listed or where are the fruits listed in your Bible? If you have read them, in which book of your Bible? Old Testament or New Testament? In the New Testament, which book? Galatians, which chapter? Chapter 5. So you need to read them and speak over yourself. Confess that you have the fruit in you because you have, because you have been born again. And the more you meditate on them, the more you look at them, the more you will become like they are. Remember when Moses, when he looked at God, his face became radiant. Why? Because he was looking at God. How can I look at God, Pastor Dora, when you read the Bible? So the more you look at the Bible with the scriptures, the more you will be like him. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So make sure that is God's will you are listening to and yielding to the leading, the prompting, his nature. Be quick to humble yourself, your heart, your mind. Be willing to change. Don't be stubborn. Judge if you're already in the, com- in the right company, if you're in the right place, and when you pray, what do you pray? Not my will, but your will be done. Why? Whose will is better? God's will. Amen? Don't live like a martyr because, you know, that's not what God wants for you. If he wants you to be a martyr, he will let you know. <laughs> Amen. (laughs) So being positive and joyful. Walking in his favor and grace. Living with vision and passion. Working with excitement and diligence. Now the Holy Spirit gave me these words. They're very powerful. My being. Your being is different from your doing. Your being is very important. So it's my being positive and joyful. That's your being. And what about your walk, your walk of life? Are you walking in grace? Are you walking in favor? Yes or no? Yes. Are you living with vision or no? Are you living with vision and passion? Amen. Is there a bounce in your steps? Passion. Vision will come with passion. If I've lost my passion, I've lost my vision. Amen. Do you still remember the times when you were in love, when you fell in love with your spouse? What were you like? Full of love, 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 passion and passion. (laughs) Just wanted to spend time with him or with her. Hey, praise the Lord. 2019, make sure you... Buy her uh, some flowers. Buy her some flowers and buy him, uh, what do you call it? A razor. (laughs) Keep your passion, praise the Lord. And uh, if you are doing something that you like, you will do it with joy, right? Excitement, because you're doing what you like. Can we say amen? Amen. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 12. Looking unto Jesus. Come on, read this with me. The author and finisher. One more time. The author and finisher. One more time. The author and finisher. If you're sitting, if you're seated with your husband, your wife, your spouse, can you please squeeze his or her hand? We started well and we're going to finish well. Come on, for your marriage. We started well, we'll finish well. Yes. Your marriage is very, very important. 
Very, very precious to God. Very, very precious. You know, the devil will attack your mind and talk bad about your spouse. Rebuke him. Don't allow anybody to talk bad about your spouse in your mind, in your ears. Cherish one another. How many of you have found the perfect wife or a perfect husband? Oh, you have. Good. I haven't. <laughs> so, I think you're wrong, but I'm right. Because the Bible says there's no one perfect but Jesus. So if you think like that, you have the grace. You have the grace for people to make mistakes. <laughs> Come on, look at your spouse. Ask yourself, has he ever made a mistake? Has she ever made a mistake? Yes, of course, la. <laughs> Isn't that right? But what do we do? Forgive and forget. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And his mercy is new every morning. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The author and the finisher. Why? Who for the joy that was set before him endure the cross, despising the shame. I'm sure there are some tough times which are hard. But don't carry them. Don't carry them. Knowing that you are not the only one going through tough times. Jesus went through tough times. Amen? And when you're going through tough times, say, thank you, Lord. I'm making good out of this. It's just like the olive. How do you get the olive oil? Press. How do you get the oil out of the olive? Press. So when you're going through tough times, when you're being pressed, Holiness is coming out of you. Holiness is coming out of you. Consecration is coming out of you. Amen. You have a domineering and a conquering spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Always have your priorities right according to the Bible. Can we say amen? Amen. So the grace to persevere, not to retaliate, not to give up. The grace to become better instead of bitter. Seeing God and fighting demons instead of seeing people and fighting people. Can we say amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Remember the process. We have a start. That's when you pioneer with your vision, your passion. Make sure that you are not burnt out and you are not running out. There's a lot of people. They always burn out and they always run out. You don't want to be like that. Say it with me. I'm not burnt out. And I don't run out. Amen. Make sure that you have the maintenance process well taken care of with perseverance. And make sure that whatever you've started, you will complete. Even when you're being tested and trialed. Resist being unfaithful. Don't jump ship. Don't change partners all the time. And get rid of familiarity and boredom. How many of you have heard of the saying that goes, familiarity breeds contempt? Don't be like that. If you have known somebody for a long time, if you've been a friend for a long time, cherish that relationship. The more you know that person, the more you should cherish your friendship. And go through the storms together. Friends overcome storms. Can we say amen? Amen. If you're always changing friends and changing partners, in the end, you'll be left all to yourself. It's not good. Say to the person next to you, faithful. Be faithful. Amen? Resist the temptation of compromising. Resist the temptation of having selfish ambition. Resist the temptation of being divisive. Don't live by regrets, change of mind, distractions. We need to understand that nothing belongs to us. So don't live by being possessive and territorial. Don't touch this, it's mine. This is my territory, don't touch it. You know, that's what dogs do. You know that, right? They wee to make sure they protect their territory. And that's why, you know, there's all the filth. Vision requires teamwork. Vision requires 
teamwork. A good marriage also requires teamwork. You can never stand on one foot. Amen. If you lose your team, you lose your vision. How many of you have heard of Christian bands? You know, they come to nothing because the whole team became disintegrated. So God's heart is faithfulness to his vision, to his team. More than the task, more than the profit. Strife is a sure loss. It's poisonous. The Bible says, a house divided against itself, what? Cannot stand. Cannot stand. Get rid of strife. It's toxic. It's poisonous. Amen? Amen. Let's finish with this. Let's hold on to our first love. Refuse to be lukewarm. Hold on to the power of hope and the power of glory. Because that brings glorious transformation. Let our lives become brighter and brighter. Keep falling in love with Jesus over and over and over again. Keep falling in love with your spouse. Keep falling in love with your friends over and over again. Be willing to change, to become better, to be transformed. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know about you. I have a lot to fight because Sonny and I, we are both Chinese. And Chinese, we are very reserved. We are not very expressive. Um, so... I have to tell myself to express my love. I have to tell Sonny to express his love towards me. Because I told you, right, when he first went out with me, he had his flowers wrapped in newspaper. <laughs> and I noticed that Caucasians are more expressive. So it's good to express. And, and you know, ever since I've been born again and I've, you know, um, been friends with Caucasians, I've learned to hug. I've learned to you know, express my gratitude, express my emotions. So it's good. Tell yourself, don't be so cold. Break out. Express your emotions. Can we say amen? Yes? Is that okay? And if you don't want to hug anybody, just give a high five. Everybody needs appreciation. Everybody needs support. Amen? Amen. Finally, can I ask you to reflect on, and let's pray. Reflect on your attitude towards God's assignment for you. Are you being possessive and critical? Or are you focusing on stewardship and discipleship? As far as God's assignment is concerned, I'm talking about your family, I'm talking about your marriage, I'm talking about your work, I'm talking about your business. What's your way of doing God's assignment? Is it a natural way, a worldly way, a professional way? Or is it a biblical way, a spiritual way, and a faithful and a humble way? What are the emotions that the world has been stirring up in me, in you? Is it love, joy, and peace? Or is it anger, intolerance, and strife? What kind of person is my work making me? Am I stressed, stingy, indifferent, hypocritical? Or am I gracious, grateful, God-conscious, God-dependent? Am I being led in order that I can lead? Or am I being just a dictator? And a controlling person. Let's pray. Father, with one heart, with one faith, we pray that the good work that you have started in us and the good work that you have assigned to us to do, that we would upkeep and we would improve and we would complete by your grace. 